Could Tesla's FSD beta really be coming to China? Starship launch is soon. Why Tesla's full self-driving beta is not like large language models and the Cybertruck from above as a cherry on top. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, a small pat on the back to my birdies that have told me that the Starship launch was going to be very, very soon rather than farther away. Turns out they were correct. This is from Felix Schlung or what about it? The launch date is April 10th from 8.10 to 12.45 local time. I believe that's actually been backed up to 7.10 to 11.45 local time. Obviously check as the date gets closer, but that is really, really soon. That's only five days away now. And of course, at present, we have backup dates on the 11th and 12th, just in case. First of all, there is not yet an official, official FAA approval, at least as I'm recording this or that I could find. It's possible that it is there at this point. Apparently there was an environmental concern that they have to work out or something, but it sounds like it's pretty much a done deal. So they're going to be able to get the license before Monday to be able to launch the Starship and Super Heavy. That is going to be quite the thing. The second part of this, I have had a ton of people just assume that I was going to Boca Chica to watch this. Unfortunately, as I said on Twitter, you know, recently before this whole thing, I was like, April is the busiest month for university professors. There is just no way. I have so much stuff going on this month that there's no way I can get away, which really, really sucks. I would love to be there. But you know what, if they do another one in May or June, I will be much freer then so I can go see the second one and uh, probably won't be quite as crowded. And hopefully the hotels won't be quite as expensive. So anyway, I'm bummed. But of course, I will watch it with most of the rest of all of you online. And of course, I'm wearing my Tesla rockets for the people shirt today, you can get that in the merch store if you're interested seemed appropriate today with the launch coming up so soon. All right, next up an overhead shot of the Cybertruck next to the Model Y. So you can sort of see the size of it. I will show you just a close up of that picture. So you you can see the humans in there to scale. Uh, interestingly enough, the back of the vehicles is relatively similar in terms of like where they are, but you can see that the Cybertruck sticks out quite a bit further and is also a good deal wider. It's not clear to me. I believe that the back bed is supposed to be six feet, but that doesn't look to be quite six feet anymore. So that is an interesting factor, but of course, you know, <laughs> perspective is kind of goofy from way up here. So it might be close to six feet and it's just difficult to tell. But anyway, between this overhead shot and a bunch of shots of it driving around in California right now, this thing is becoming very, very real. And of course, Elon, a couple of days ago, talked about walking the production line for the Cybertruck for a couple of hours. So this is really cool stuff. Very, very neat to see this all coming to reality finally after four years. Really interesting to see when the car turns that the rear wheels do actually turn with the front wheels. I don't know if that is always or if that's just because they were testing that out but you could see the rear wheels as the front wheels would turn a good deal the rear wheels turned a little bit to help the turning radius of the vehicle so there is a good chance that the car might be able to actually turn in a tighter radius than the model y which of course would be really really cool for a truck and just real quick as somebody mentioned here the top of the dash where the window comes down from where the driver is is incredibly long in this right if you look at where the glass goes to there's i don't know you're going to be able to put like your laptop and a suitcase and a bunch of other things up there, right? It's just, it's like really, really massive amount of space there. So it's rather interesting that that was the design they went with. I'm sure that's for aerodynamics more than anything else, but it is going to give it a pretty crazy look to have that big of a top of the dash exposed as you're driving down the road. Next up are rumors from China that Tesla's full self-driving beta is going to make an appearance in China. Here is the original report from Kaijin News Source. And this, of course, is in Chinese. I don't read it, so I translated it. It's a, not a great translation. I will just warn you of that. But here we go. And also, I believe this is cut off, so it's starting in the middle of the whole thing. Anyway, people from famous new energy vehicle companies commented that BYD's foundation, there are all kinds of level two auxiliary driving functions, in other words, ADAS systems, uh, automated driver assistance systems, but the user experience is far behind the new power of car manufacturing. They're speaking of BYD here particularly, and even not as good as some traditional fuel models such as Volkswagen and Toyota. For example, in the parking scene, die pilot or D pilot can realize automatic parking, but vehicle summoning and memory. I'm not exactly sure, it just kind of cuts off there. Advanced functions such as parking are not available. In the high speed scene, I assume they mean the rapidly developing scene, the new forces of car manufacturing and self-driving suppliers will start to apply the navigation assistance function from the end of 2020. That is, as long as the owner sets the destination, the vehicle can drive independently and complete the follow-up and change on the way. Now, I have seen things, and I'll show you the, the new source that says this. I think the translation of this is they're talking about Tesla 
that Tesla started doing full self-driving beta in 2020, but that's not exactly clear. So anyway, between the translation being kind of goofy and this being the only source that we've seen, obviously take this all with a gigantic grain of salt. But the interesting part is coming up here. The submachine of Zhao Peng and Fan Hu helped them enter the eighth promotion period. According to Kaijin, it dominates the range of 200,000 to 300,000 yuan. And Tesla in the higher end market is about to start the full self-driving test in China. That is the news that is making everybody go crazy. I assume that what we're talking about here is this highlighted part because it says full self-driving there. So <laughs> seems reasonable. But anyway, if you want to pause the screen, if you read Chinese and you can give me a better translation than what they've got, that would be fantabulous. But it does look like what they're talking about here, at least according to this news source, is that Tesla is going to be rolling out full self-driving beta like in North America very soon. And a little follow-up to this from Tesla Economics. Now we know one of the main reasons why Elon is visiting China this week, which is coming up very soon. Very interesting. He's got a Starship launch. He's going to have to squeeze that in. It's a pretty long trip to China, even on a private jet. If news comes out, and in fact, Tesla is launching FSD beta in China, watch out for FSD margins to start ballooning and the FSD take rate to start moving up materially. So this, of course, is a very good point. The take rate for Tesla's full self-driving beta is supposed to be somewhere around 10%, although Tesla doesn't really break it out, so we're not exactly sure. But anyway, the point here is that if you expand the market, especially to the largest auto market in the world, you're looking at a take rate that could go from 10% to even if it goes to 15 or 20%, even if it's not that big of a take rate, that still is, you know, that's software margin. So we're talking 80 or 90% margins on every one of those sales they make. So that would be really big news for Tesla's bottom line. More importantly, China is the hotbed for full self-driving and autonomous driving competition right now, much more than in North America or Europe. There are a ton of companies that are competing in that space, so Tesla really needs to get on it and make that happen. Now, one of the interesting aspects of this is that China wanted Tesla to lock down the information that they had. In other words, they have to live in data centers within China, and I know that Tesla went ahead and did that, so pretty much all of the data they're collecting is staying in China, but that doesn't mean that they can't take the model that they've trained in North America in the United States and Canada and move that model to China and train on that and fine tune it. So I think the timing makes sense at this point. They needed to wait for version 11 to come out because they needed the single stack, you know, pretty much everything in the vehicle's driving regime, which is parking lots, regular streets and highways are all now on a single stack. So it makes sense now to roll this out in China and start to fine tune it for that market. Of course, if this is actually true, this would be absolutely huge news because it shows a great deal of confidence from Tesla in their full self-driving team. And just to follow up on this, Verum News has a report on this from earlier this morning from Ava Fox, so hi to Ava. Tesla reportedly may start large-scale FSD trials in China. Remember that all of this is based on this one report, so everybody is talking about the same thing. So if they're wrong, this is all wrong. So again, I'm just making sure people don't get ahead of themselves. But it is interesting timing that, te that Elon Musk is going to China this week. Tesla may start large-scale FSD trials in China, according to a Chinese publication. The rumor comes amid a recent report that the manufacturer may soon release a major autopilot update in the eastern country related to Tesla Vision Park Assist. Tesla achieved great success with the development of its full self-driving FSD. At the moment, its beta version is being widely tested in North America. Local customers comment that they are delighted with the functionality of the latest version 11 update, and I certainly am. If you haven't seen my videos, you should definitely check them out really, really performing well, which has a single stack for highways and city driving. But the development of autopilot in China is not progressing at the same fast pace, which is primarily due to local regulators. I'm not positive about that. I think it probably has more to do with the fact that Tesla wanted to get it working pretty darn well in North America before they tried a market that's very, very different. You know, they rolled it out to Canada, but Canada, aside from kilometers per hour instead of miles per hour and a few different signs, is a very, very similar road structure to the United States. So that made sense. China is quite different and, of course, has some crazy hairy intersections and things that uh, don't exist in North America. So it's going to be interesting to see how full self-driving handles those crazy things. I'm I'm sure that Tesla has been testing it internally with drivers there, and they've been checking up on it to make sure that it's going to work at some adequate level, but it will be really interesting to see how quickly FSD progresses in China if it does roll out there. Anyway, continuing on, an April 3rd report published by China's Kaijin said that Tesla will soon begin large-scale FSD testing in China. Apart from this statement, the report contained no further details, so it should be viewed with a great deal of skepticism. It's worth noting that this is not the first time that rumors about the development of Tesla 
autopilot in China have appeared recently. On March 27th, Chris Zhang on Twitter, who is an influencer in China, said via his Weibo account, which has over 500,000 followers, quote, Tesla China will soon release a major update to autopilot, end quote. On his Twitter account, he clarified that Tesla China has been internally testing Tesla Vision Park Assist for several months. So this is Park Assist. That is not the entire full self-driving beta stack. <laughs> Again, weigh this as you will. Hopefully we'll find out in a few days if, if Elon Musk is indeed actually traveling to China just for this purpose and of course to visit the Shanghai factory. But if this is a major purpose of this, it'll be announced very, very soon. Continuing on, Chris thinks that this feature will soon be rolled out to Chinese owners. Zheng is notorious for occasionally leaking information about Tesla, some instances of which have turned out to be true, such as the new Cybertruck style CyberVault wall connector, which by the way is pretty darn cool looking. Currently, all Tesla vehicles in China come with free basic autopilot software. In addition, Tesla offers enhanced autopilot and full self-driving software as an option. EAP and FSD cost $4,650 US dollars and $9,300 US dollars respectively in China. So I would assume that the FSD, the $9,300 option would give you access to FSD beta if and when that comes out. And what's more, just briefly going back to the source, you can see it says full self-driving, not full self-driving beta. So it is unclear whether they're just talking about adding a park assist feature to something that exists already or whether they're considering rolling out all of full self-driving. So anyway, all rumors at this point, hopefully we'll find out in a few days, but it is exciting news, which actually segues perfectly into the last thing I want to talk about today, which is large language models versus Tesla's full self-driving autonomous driving solution. Berkeley's AI Research Lab just released a product they're calling Koala, which is trained on Meta's Llama, which is a competition to Stanford's Alpaca. So all of these guys with their animal names have really, really outdone OpenAI. And in fact, Google has too, because they call theirs Bard. So so OpenAI needs to get on the branding thing and stop calling their product G chat GPT. They should call it something more fun. Like I was thinking chatty Kathy, so you could just call it Kathy. I don't know. Anyway, it seems to be the animal theme at this point. So they should come up with a name for their product. But anyway, that aside, what we're seeing is an incredible explosion of large language models. And the main reason why I went and looked at the blog post for the Koala release is that these data sources that they use to train these things on and the language models themselves, a lot of these are public domain information. And so all of these different research labs and companies can train on the same information, which means that there's not much of a data moat. It means that large language models are going to become commodified very, very rapidly if they aren't already. And that means that OpenAI's first mover advantage, you know, could disappear relatively quickly. And that could be a major problem for them in terms of being the most commercially successful company out of these companies. And I listened to the All In podcast, of course, I think everybody else does. But anyway, they talked a lot about how the first mover is not always the one in the new tech space. You know, there was MySpace before Facebook, and guess who won in that? Facebook was not the first mover in that space, but they came in and they took over that space. So it doesn't have to be the first person, the first company that creates a product that wins in that space. It could be the second or third or fifth or something. So we're looking at an amazing amount of tumult right now in the large language model space. And the big reason why is there's really not that big of a moat. One moat of course, is the weights of your model, but there's a lot of open source models at this point. And then the other moat is the data, but the data is available to pretty much everybody if you want it right now. So the large language model space is incredibly crowded and I expect it will continue to get more and more crowded and we'll see very, very rapid advancements. So how is this different than autonomous driving? Well, collecting real world autonomous driving information is incredibly arduous and difficult. And the only companies that have really done that are Mobileye to some extent, and especially Tesla. And Tesla in particular, having collected billions of miles of driving data and hundreds of millions of miles of full self-driving beta driving data, have a massive, massive lead. And that is a moat that you just can't defeat. You can't just go out and build 100,000 or a million vehicles and start collecting data tomorrow and drive them around for a couple of years. It doesn't work that way. So this data moat is absolutely gigantic. And it's something that Tesla, if they you know hold on to that and don't open source it, no Nobody else can catch them except possibly Mobileye because they're the only other company that for a period of time has been collecting data like that. 
And then of course, the second boat is the weights of the neural networks and the architecture itself, because Tesla doesn't, you know, since the days of Andre Carpathy, they haven't really gone into great depth about exactly what the architecture of the full self-driving stack looks like. So they've talked about individual pieces, but not really how it's all put together. So anyway, the architecture, the, the weights of the models, that's a huge thing. And of course, Tesla's not gonna give that away anytime soon. And then the, the biggest moat, honestly, is just the collection of data. So unless Tesla gives away the architecture, the weights of their models, and all of their driving data, unless they open source all of that stuff, nobody else can really catch them, again, with the possible exception of Mobileye. But of course, Mobileye captures data in a lot different ways, and they use LiDAR and all sorts of other things like that. So that's not as good of data, it's not as high a quality, and we don't know exactly how Mobileye is, is processing this data and turning it into stuff that's useful for training. So I would put them in a distant second, but Tesla is way, way, way out in the lead and there's just no way that anybody's gonna catch them. And so while everybody says, look, full self-driving hasn't done an autonomous drive yet in the city of Phoenix for three miles like you know Waymo has done or Cruise in San Francisco, that's not the point here. The point is a generalized solution and the generalized solution belongs to Tesla as long as they are have a smart enough group of people to figure out how to use that data to build the right architecture, to train the right weights. And if anybody in the world has that group of people, it's definitely Tesla. So while the large language model space is rapidly expanding and will become commoditized in my opinion, so it's not gonna cost that much for us users to use it, Tesla's in a whole different world with autonomous driving. And that means that if and when they can get this solved, they, the world is theirs. They can license this to other vehicle manufacturers as they wish, and they can make money off the other man vehicle manufacturers driving their vehicles. So of course, the opportunity for Tesla to take most of the autonomous driving market is just sitting right there for them to take. And if you want me to go out on a limb here, I would say within a year, we will see evidence of this from the fact that regulators are starting to look very, very closely at Tesla's autonomous solutions and allowing the car under limited circumstances and in certain geographies to drive the user around without them having to pay attention. I'm not saying that's gonna be a done deal, but I'm saying that regulators in some regions are going to be looking at it. So anyway, check back in a year and let's see how I did with that prediction. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and interesting and thought provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons and also my YouTube channel members. Thank you all so much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. And if you wanna join the team, just check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Teslabot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.